Okay, we're very happy to have back with us Jim Abbott from the uh, first graduating class of Crossroads in 1982. Jim uh, wrote a book that was published in 1993, is that right? Designing uh, 90, in 98. In, in 98, 98 first, sorry. First yeah. go round, 98, yeah. Okay, all right. Very good about the Kennedy White House. I, I want to uh, begin, Jim, with this, that I believe the first time I met you, um, mm -hmm. the topic of the Kennedys came up. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I looked back on what you wrote for uh, Recollections about Crossroads. And if you don't mind, I'm going to quote from your first paragraph, okay? Sure. It says, it seems appropriate that my earliest Crossroads memory is intertwined with this no longer extant utopian experiment born in the 1960s idealism, delineated by acres of a homogenous, flat-roofed, precision-placed, two- and three-story houses and <laughs> storefronts that I had often admired via car and bus window. I associated the whole with the martyrdom of John F. Kennedy, my hero, and the Great Society vision of LBJ. And I remember you and I connecting more so mm -hmm. about the Kennedys than Johnson in the beginning. Yep. Um, so tell us more about how your initial um, interest in the Kennedys and then the White House developed. Um, it it was throughout childhood, I think. Um, I, I was born the day after JFK was assassinated. And I think I've mentioned to you that I, I don't remember having Dr. Seuss books or um, children's books. And although my siblings had those, um, I'm the youngest of eight. I may have borrowed some of theirs, um, but I remember the books that I had growing up um, were um, addressed the Kennedy assassination. So they'd be picture books like The Torch Has Been Passed. And, and then I can remember very early on reading Death of a President, which is probably not the best childhood book um, uh, or book for a child to read. And and some of those others, and it, um, I was always interested in um, design, in decorative arts, and I I think I mentioned that my feeling is when you're the last of a large group of kids and your parents are pretty exhausted, um, you actually absorb more of their personal interests and passions than the first children or the, the kids in the middle. And so my father was um, an engineer, but he was, I think a, he had wanted to be an architect. He had wanted to be many things. Um, and I, I think I absorbed that interest in architecture. And our mother had wanted to be an artist among other things. And so I absorbed a little of that. And then I had an interest, strangely enough, in politics. And I think it was tied to where, to the, the time in which I was, of, uh, to which I was born. Um, and you throw all of those together, you mix them around, and inevitably the White House comes up. And I think when I um, applied to Crossroads, I knew that at some point I was going to write a book on the Kennedy White House. And um, it was just always there. It was always going to happen. And um, and it, Crossroads encouraged me to do it. And I've written other books uh, that have been outgrowths of that topic that have strangely enough been on French designers. And um, and I don't speak French well, and my reading is very poor. Um, and you should remember that from my grades in French class in, uh, <laughs> at Crossroads. But um, it, it's, it's just a topic that has actually given me a career, strangely enough. So your, your first interest was in Jack, and then Jackie came along, who, by the way, she just uh, tried to suppress the publication of the death of a president, correct? She had, yes, she had done that. And um, I actually was interested in both. And, and, you know, for John F. Kennedy, I was interested in the idealism. And um, and I was always fascinated when I would meet people such as Arthur Lieber, who would say um, life was changed when John F. Kennedy ran for president. Um, I, I was invigorated. I was inspired. And and I liked that. I liked that idea. And, and um, thinking about um, Laclede Town and um, the architecture and that long winded description of 
of no longer um, existing um, neighborhood. Um, you know, in a post-World War II era, there, I think after every war, there seems to be a desire to re uh, revisit the best of Amer of um, the best of mankind's history. And so classicism is always revisited. And, you know, to a degree, um, Lickley Town had a classicism. It was sort of like um, uh, a, 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 um, like a Lincoln Center, only for residents, um, um, when Lincoln Center itself was a revisiting of the Acropolis uh, in a post-World War II era. So, mm -hmm. and the Kennedys were very much, you know, JFK had started a... Um, an excellence in design program. He really didn't get to see it um, take off, but he had initiated as president an excellence in design for architecture of government buildings because he was so disappointed by um, the um, basically cookie cutter um, square box um, uh, vocabulary that had been adopted by post-World War II um, government designers, GSA designers. And I think that program still exists to this day where it celebrates good design. It brings artists and architects together to create um, meaningful um, backdrops for um, the different branches of government. And um, so that was my, Laclede Town sort of borrowed from that idealism. And I'm, I'm so thankful to have had the opportunity to have visited your house to have visited you, um, you and Carol um, in Laclede Town because I think that was the only time I was in Laclede Town. Um, and yet I often reference it as one of the most beautiful compositions um, I've known uh, or experienced, but I think I was only there once, strangely. It's interesting. I mean, we are working with a professor at St. Louis University now who is uh, putting together a new history of Laclede Town. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to give him your name um, mm -hmm. because of the perspective that you have on it. And you, um, and your first year at Crossroads was our first year on Lindell. Oh, or second, I think it was the second year. Second year, okay. Yeah, because um, I, I was actually brought in to help. Um, you, you invited me in before I started to help clean up the building Mm -hmm. um, and prepare it for the next year, my first year. And it had already been established as Crossroads, um, which is why yeah. uh, it needed to be clean up, cleaned up. Yeah. So um, speaking of that cleanups, um, when we talk about restoration of, of the White House, um, you know, we, we realize, you know, Dolly Madison and think about uh, Harry Truman and Bess uh, mm -hmm. and Margaret living in Blair House when the uh, White House underwent significant renovations then. What made the uh, Kennedy renovations different? Well, I, I think um, in part um, it was um, a joint venture. And we, we forget that, that, um, you know, John and Jacqueline Kennedy were only married for 10 years really one of the shortest marriages um, uh, of a president and first lady. And um, they entered into this project together. And why, you ask? Well, JFK was interested in history. His wife was interested in history. They were both very vocal edit um, editors of books. It, it, you know, they would buy books and then they would share them between one uh, with one another. And then they would sit down and have this conversation about what was good, what was bad about it. And um, I, I think that JFK as president was really concerned of how the public would accept um, any transformation, any change of the president's house. And in fact, I think just after the election, when Mrs. Kennedy had announced she had ambitions for the interiors of the White House, um, that um, there, the New York Times or, or one of the great papers um, spoke about bringing contemporary art and and maybe painting the White House um, a, a warmer white, almost pink color. And there was a great public outcry over um, Mrs. Kennedy um, altering, planning to alter what Americans for the most part saw as um, 
historic. And you bring up Truman. The fact of the matter is the White House really wasn't historic. It was the four walls were historic. But during the Truman renovation, the entire interior had been scooped out and and in um, industrial scale air conditioning had been installed and um, rooms had been remastered for a modern presidential backdrop, um, which is um, which probably worked for Truman, didn't quite work for Dwight Eisenhower and certainly wasn't going to work for John F. Kennedy. And history was so important to the Kennedys as well, because JFK was, there was doubt about JFK's qualifications to be president, and his youth was brought into question. He was the youngest elected president. Teddy Roosevelt had been the youngest um, president. But um, with that, um, I think um, history and the celebration of history and the idea of using history as a backdrop for an administration was a way that JFK felt he could validate his administration, his election. And to that, I also think that history, um, the celebration of American history was um, timely for that, uh, for the uh, exiting the 1950s. We really were, for, for the most part, finally shedding um, our World War II um, wounds. And we were moving into what could mm. be considered a, um, a a modern classical age. And Robert Frost would re would reference it at JFK's inauguration, and and JFK would certainly reference that. But it really was a rebirth of a uh, of America, and it was um, our shining light. We were we were certainly finally accepting the fully the the, the role of world power. So, the restoration of the White House um, had an importance. Um, for John F. Kennedy, for the Kennedy administration, and it also had it for the American people. I think it gave, um, in in the two years, ten months, and two days of the Kennedy rest, uh, the Kennedy administration, that transformation really helped Americans um, embrace um, their um, their history and to feel a part of it and to feel as if um, anything could be done. History is an amazing, amazing tool in politics because it really can challenge the next generation and it really can be used as um, a, a way of making, of building people up, not taking people down. And I think the Kennedys understood that. Um, and the restoration um, captured in the American ma uh, imagination. Um, you know, today, could, um, could Melania Trump or um, could Doug um, uh, um, yeah. br bring forth a, a restoration of the White House, bringing in wealthy friends? Now, the Kennedys were very savvy. They did not focus on just Democrats. In fact, they, the president insisted that anyone involved, that, that the committees that his wife had set up had to be a balance between conservative Republicans mm -hmm. and liberal Democrats. And, and indeed, they were. And the fact that Mrs. Kennedy could bring Henry Francis DuPont, the founder of Winter Tour, America's great a resource with regards to the history of American decorative arts, um, a conservative Republican, um, uh, a mocker of Mrs. Kennedy's uh, mother, um, uh, to bring him on as um, the, um, the face of the restoration is truly, I mean, that shows that she was as much the politician as her husband was. And one one final question, and, the, and sure. that is, what makes designing camp different talks about the Kennedy White House? Um, you broke up there. So what uh, what, what, does what design... makes designing Camelot different from other books about the Kennedy White House? Well, um, it when first written and first published. It was the first attempt to show the origins of the, the the idea of the White House as a historic house, and the idea of building a national collection of both fine de and decorative arts, and um, and how the Kennedys pulled it off because of, there wasn't a, a, um, a, a consensus of American support behind them. It really was controversial. So that book was which started as an undergraduate thesis, a graduate thesis, went into an exhibition that. Caroline Kennedy gave her approval to, and then J Jane Reisman sent me money to do a, a catalog. Strangely enough, the New York Times um, reviewed. That rolled into 
a uh, the first book, Designing Camelot. That was in 1998. And I remember going to the White House to speak to the one of the, the curators on another project. And, and I felt as if his nose was out of joint. <laughs> and um, he was re really being nasty to me. And mm. Um, and so I finally said, okay, what, what have I done wrong? And he said, you wrote that book. And I said, and what's, what was wrong with that book? And he said, nothing, but that was our subject. Mm. And so with that, I've always had a very difficult relationship with the White House and the curatorial staff of the White House, although some of them have been kinder than others to that. The White House Historical Association came back to me and came back to a co my co-author, Elaine Rice Bachman, um, around uh, 2019 and said they wanted to republish the book, but they would open up all of the photo archives that had been withheld to, uh, from us by, um, by other powers in the, in the 1990s. And they wanted to republish it under the, the guise of the White House Historical Association, which had fa been founded by Mrs. Kennedy. That was a great honor. And I, I asked, um, strangely, you're coming to us, you know, the White House wasn't playing nicely with us in the 1990s. Why are you doing this? And they said, because no one has, has done a better job of documenting this period than what you accomplished in 1998. And with that, we would be honored to have it um, published by the White House Historical Association. And that I mean, that says it. It's a concise book. It's I think it's a pretty easy read. Um, and um, you don't have to be in, into decorative arts to get the gist of what's going on. And and today we still see the White House in the, the light of the Kennedy efforts. Um, so that's the value. That's the importance. That's what makes it different than any book, any previous book.